Welcome back to Restless. I'm Father Joseph Gill, priest of the Diocese of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and you've joined Diane, Lauren, and Javier, as today we discuss more about our Catholic faith living it out in today's crazy, mixed-up world. Speaking of crazy, mixed-up worlds, the reason why the world is crazy and mixed up is because of sin, in particular, original sin, which all of us carry the burden of, all of us deal with. What do you guys know about original sin? Because that's, uh, you know, we're talking over um, just earlier about how not many Catholics may understand what original sin is and kind of the, the deal with it, you know? So throw, throw out some knowledge, throw out some pearls of wisdom about original sin. Uh, let's see. So there's the fall of Adam and Eve. This brought sin into the world because of their distrust of God. And I think, too, at that point, like the world kind of then was turned over to Satan in a way. Yeah, very say. much so like, in a way. Yeah. So the devil is kind of in control of this world and God allows sin, right? A lot of people don't understand that, I think, because God is good, but he allows sin and evil because he will win, right? And, and uh, along this journey we have, we have the free will, right, to choose good or evil. And we are constantly choosing every day, all these decisions, how we treat people. Um, but so original sin is something that we're born with. It's given us this inclination towards sin called concupiscence, right? So we have this tendency to turn towards sin, I think, and distrust God. And uh, it's why baptism is so important. Yeah. So original sin is kind of interesting. You know, original sin actually impacted. There's, there's two parts of the human person. There's body and soul. And the soul has two parts, the intellect and the free will. And all four parts were impacted by original sin. So in the level of the body, we've got suffering and death that entered the world. That wasn't part of God's plan. Um, you know, in the soul, we have separation from God. And then the intellect, the intellect was darkened. You know, it used to be easy for us to read things and to know it. We could read, you know, a book once and we wouldn't have to study. And we just, it would be in there, you know. So our intellect is now darkened. Sometimes we fall into errors and, and mistakes, you know, which we wouldn't have done otherwise. And then, as you mentioned, that concupiscence, which is, Disordered desires and desiring things that are harmful to us. Give me some practical examples of how you see that lived out in your daily life, like desiring things you know are bad for you. I mean, just anything that has to do with pleasure, right? Like you're eating something and you're not hungry and you just want to keep eating because you want sort of that pleasure associated with, you know, taking in more food or I don't know, anything in terms of like sexual desires and sort of indulging in those types of things well so we got to be clear though like because pleasure is not bad right no it's not so where's the line i mean when you sort of make it into a god i guess or like use it to <laughs> in a way that god didn't intend for you to use something or for selfish selfish reasons right because we are here for each other right to love each other and give love to each other but when you use pleasure for yourself only Mm. that's when I think it's sinful. Yeah. Someone was, uh, this past weekend, I gave a homily about how our little choices matter. And I used the example of like walking past, past the break room at work where there was a donut sitting out. And you're kind of like, well, I don't know, like should I ha eat the donut? Should I not eat the donut? And I was kind of giving the example that like if you don't eat the donut, you've strengthened your will, you know, to be able to choose the good. So this guy emails me and he says, you know, I kind of took from your homily that like pleasure is bad and we should avoid it. And I was like, oh, no, that's not what I meant at all, you know? But what, what you're saying, I think, is right. Is that like pleasure for its own sake is pretty empty. You know, pleasure when it comes to uh, doing things that unite us to others, you know, or something that we need bodily, you know, like sleeping in is a pleasure and it's a good thing. We should enjoy it when we need it. But obviously that can be misused like any pleasure. What do you think, Javier? No, I think uh, St. Paul puts it very well. I think we're we we need to continually examine ourselves and why we're doing the things that we're doing and he calls us to deny our flesh and that does not just mean sexual desires i mean that that means everything you were talking about it you were talking about the things that we eat the things that we that our flesh desires our flesh could desire fame our flesh could desire um money and then that goes into different i mean it's all it all trickles down to different things then you start comparing yourselves to the next person and we know that comparison is the thief of joy and then that affects your life and then now you're not joyful and you're trying to find joy in the things that uh, are never gonna bring you joy um and so i think it's if we go back to original sin it was rooted in pride right 
what was the original sin i mean they the devil came to them and they said i mean the god doesn't want you to see the world the way that he sees the world and so if you eat out of this tree then your eyes will be opened and stuff and then in their pride they said well i mean we want to be like god and so in a way that's kind of what we do on a daily basis it's like we we want to live our lives in the way that we want to live them and not in the way that god intended us to live them and it is it's all it all goes back to that original sin and i, I see it in my life all the time i know what's the way that i'm supposed to live my life yet no matter what no matter what i do i still find a way to like do the things that i that my flesh desires so give me give us a concrete example because i'll tell you my concrete example all you can eat buffets <laughs> oh 100 man when i was when i was living in maryland there was this one called the golden corral you ever been to the golden corral yes no, I have not. it's like a feeding trough for humans southern yeah thing. yeah southern like fried chicken and like you just get seven plates of food. Midwestern thing. Yeah, like kind of Midwestern thing. And mm-hmm. and you're just like, man, that was so good. Like my, your buttons are popping off. That's great. And then <laughs> Meanwhile, then you are so thin. <laughs> <laughs> look, the only reason I run is so I can eat all I want. Okay, fair. But then you look up and you're like, man, I haven't been to the dessert table yet. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I got to go to the dessert table. And you're like, but wait, if I go to the dessert table, it's going to hurt. You're going to be in pain. Like my guts may physically spill out on the pavement, but... I do it anyway, you know? I think all of us has that weakness. In fact, I really think that like every human being is drawn to sin in one of four ways. Money, fame, pleasure, or power. It's like our main temptation, our main kind of concupiscence, weakness. What would you say is yours? You can be honest. This is public confession. Only thousands of people are going to hear us. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, it's interesting when you say that. I was kind of awakened to this concept, you know, only a few months ago, really, uh, how we seek wealth, honor, status, you know, fame. And this is all for the devil. This is what the devil wants us to do, right? This is not making us holy. This is not what God cares about. Um, And it just was like, wow, you look at society, everything's like, how much wealth can I accumulate? Um, How high can I get on the corporate ladder? You know, how much honor I I can have? Um, And I don't know, I think you can just see power hungry people all over the place, whether, you know, just mistreating others or like taking advantage of their authority, right? It's just everywhere in society. Um, So which one's yours? I was thinking it's probably fame for me. Yeah, because when I started to first get attention with Ultimate, that definitely made me feel really good. I can remember in college, I was mentioned as like, or maybe right after college, I think, as a club player, like upcoming players in the women's division, and they picked seven, and they and I was one. Mm. And this was like when uh, the ultimate news sur- source for for ultimate just came out uh, in 2012, Ulti World, and I got over a hundred likes. And at that time, that was a lot, <laughs> you know. And I was just like, wow, this is awesome. And I just wanted to become more well known mm. in my sport and like be established, you know. And, and there's some legitimacy to that in that. Like people need to know that you're good to put you on their team. It's not always like how you do at tryouts, you know, like you kind of need to be known. But I also, I know, I just wanted it to like have that fame, I guess. Sure, sure. What about you, Diane? I guess it's, I guess it's more pleasure, I would say. Nothing extreme, but like I feel like I'm pretty lazy when it comes to cleaning, like, (laughs) and and things like that. Um, Just because I like to, I don't know, I like to do things on on my own time and like I definitely am kind of I love sleeping in like in the morning sometimes I don't need to do that but I still do it and kind of indulge myself in those ways but I don't know I think the biggest I guess sin that I struggle with I don't think it I don't know what category it falls into but it's kind of just like making an idol of my like the plans that I have for my life and the way I want things to go as opposed to sort of like accepting what god's will is for my life and what that could entail i just sort of like i'm so stubborn i'm like i want it i want this by this age this by that you know and it's like i don't know that's sort of the biggest thing that i struggle with so i don't really like i mean i'm sure these other categories i fall into but that's like the biggest sort of like that's kind of like pride pride i guess it is pride yeah i just want i want to do things my way and I'm trying to... That reminds me of a Frank Sinatra song. (laughs) (laughs) I did it my way. 
which seen ironically that? i've had many requests for that to be played at a funeral oh okay well i don't want which, that played at my funeral that's so good, i hope i won't I can let it happen sort of if you over- die before me <laughs> yeah I, I hope i can overcome this before i die but it's something that i'm working on that i feel like is uh just you know my plans for my life and i need to kind of be open to what god might have in store for me yeah that's why in, in many ways some some of the covid lockdown was gift a gift because mm-hmm. we have all these plans and it just came crashing down and god's like yeah that's because your plans are not my plans hmm. yeah and i think it's good too because it kind of i mean at least for myself like i'm such a routine person it kind of got me out of my routine i was like oh my gosh i'm not gonna be able to go to the gym like what am i gonna do and it's like <laughs> well i discovered all of these you know like running outside and all these things that like i wouldn't have been open to if that hadn't happened you, and you prefer running in the gym to running outside i did before like i mean it was oh, just an man. easy thing to do before work you know it was dark and everything and That's it's like true. okay well now you know i might have to go in the afternoon as opposed to the morning it's all these little things that i feel like god kind of like puts in your path to to open your heart and yeah. um so yeah it is a blessing that's fair mm-hmm. what about you javier what's your your biggest draw but i've definitely struggled with the fame and uh, when i was really into social media i I was all about the how many people were watching my story, how many people were liking my pictures, and I realized that that has since gone away because I do get on social media and I do post on my stories. I never ever check, you know, like, I mean, I, I might go into it to see if a certain person, if I'm trying to like evangelize or something like that, like if a certain person sees it and stuff. I think for me it's pleasure and it's, it's rooted in pride for sure. Pride is a sin that I struggle with a lot and um, sometimes it's not so obvious in my life and then sometimes it is um, and most of the time I actually have to examine the sin that I'm falling into and it pretty much always falls back to pride well it is the root of all sins yeah, yeah. I mean just it's, doing it, selfish you know, what I want not what God wants you know like not forgiving people when I feel like I've been wronged or something and I think it's because I have such a thick skin that when somebody does offend me, then I feel like I'm entitled to not forgive them because it's like, well, I've put up with so much that you got to this point. Now I can't forgive you. Now I'm going to take an hour and a half to forgive you. And it's like Jesus forgave on the cross after everything they did to him. Uh, And I'm sure he was forgiving people on his way up, up to Calvary. And who am I? to not forgive somebody for talking to me in a certain way or for cursing in a conversation or something things that really like you know rattle me up you know that's an interesting connection between unforgiveness and pride never really thought about that oh i think about that a a lot a lot of times it does spring from pride yeah our wounded ego Hmm. for me uh you know it's funny uh, funny hearing you guys because fame is definitely my uh temptation as well I remember when I was in college, I was, you know, it'd, it'd make me insane because I've I played music and, you know, guitar and piano. And I was like, really wanted to be known for that. Like, that was kind of my thing. And and whenever somebody else would get like, you know, they would have like concerts and stuff out in the uh, courtyard. And whenever it would be someone else playing and not me, I'd be like, dude, I'm better than that guy. Like, well, how how'd that guy get picked? Like, come on, you know? And, and I was insanely jealous. Like, and thankfully, you know, God's grace has mellowed me over time. But like, still, like when I hear somebody complimented, I'm like, wait, I could do that better. You know? I'm the exact same way. Yeah, and, I was going to say, I think that's very normal. Oh, that's good. <laughs> very common. Because <laughs> I feel really bad. I feel bad about it because it's, it's a sin. I mean. Oh, I think it's almost like, I don't know, we'll feel slighted in a way, right? If, if over anything, someone gets attention that we see, and, and it's just so natural, like, wait a minute, I'm smarter than them. I'm funnier than them. I'm prettier than them. Like, wh- whatever the thought is, it's just it's just natural. And, and you know, you've realized it. I think we all probably could do a better job putting ourselves in check. Like, no, no, I'm supposed to love this person and, you know, be happy for them, for whatever it is that they're experiencing right now. Yeah, and I realized like their gifts do not diminish me right. as a person, right? Like yeah. I can say, Lauren, that you are way better than me at Ultimate Frisbee. Well, that is a true fact. Well, thank you. But I had this problem with pride too that I, I didn't even know um, until pride was explained to me better. But I totally had like, I don't know, like twisted, like thinking I was better than people because I could throw the Frisbee better. 
Mm. You know, and I, I have a lot of control in my game and I'd watch other people like throw it into the ground and be like, man. And in my head, I'm like, you stink. You know, like, and I'm constantly <laughs> thinking that because I'm... Are you thinking that when we no, play together? No, yes, no, you no. are. In yeah, league, just <laughs> no, in in my league, it's it's a local league. It's for fun. But I take it super seriously because I'm so competitive. And even that, that's been like a new realization for me. Like, Lauren... This is recreation after work. You know, like, <laughs> calm down. But I, I would watch other people make mistakes and just, like, we we're talking about boost my own ego. Like, oh, I'm so good. Like, I don't make those kinds of mistakes. And then, you know, I, I, I would drop certainly um, deep passes in the end zone. But to me, that would be like um, a fluke. And then I had a friend tell me once, like, uh, you can't catch well, like, outside of the box, like the bread box. And I was like, what? That's not true. And then I'd miss another one up in the sky, like a high one. I'd be like, oh, gosh, he's right. You know, like, <laughs> so we all have things, like, I don't know. But you can just get twisted, I think, in your mind, like, thinking you're so great, you're better than other people. Well, that's how I think how God moves is that he often gives us the antidote to that so if fame is our of our temptation then he'll give us some humbling experience mm. you know that we're like oh man and now i'm not all that you know i'm not i'm not the person i thought i was i'm not that great you know maybe if pleasure is our our temptation then god will give us some pain some suffering physical suffering to kind of break that chain of of desiring pleasure more than anything i don't know if you know maybe if if money is your temptation then god will cause you to lose some or lose your job or something yeah, I mean, everyone has to earn a living, right? So, I mean, that's not sinful, you know, in your career, but I guess it's, it becomes sinful if you're, like, obsessive over it. Is that what you would say? Yeah. Or, like, attached to it, you know? Yeah. Anything that becomes an idol. So, and yeah. that's going to look different for everybody. And even, you know, even pleasure and power and fame aren't bad in themselves. Yeah, and I think it honestly, like, those things kind of speak to sort of like this pride, right? And like Lawrence saying wanting to be the best or like be known as the best it's like it kind of speaks to god the way that he works in our hearts right because everyone at the core of who we are we want to be known we want to be loved and that's god knocking on the door of our hearts i think people just kind of like skew it in sort of those other ways but if you can kind of redirect that desire and understand what it truly is then you can discover the one that's going to satisfy yeah that's so true especially for those who love fame because mm -hmm. like we're looking for that attention thinking that it's going to be if if only enough people like my post then i'm going to be happy mm -hmm. you yeah. know and it's never enough so no but i think that's god's way of sort of communicating to us and having us like if you spend enough time sort of in silence to understand that like gaping hole that you feel um i mean i think that's god's invitation to kind of to seek him true when we come back from break we're going to talk about kind of how God starts to break some of those chains of sin and how we can recognize that we're sinners but not be racked with guilt. Stay tuned. And welcome back to Restless. You know, we've been talking today about sin, particularly original sin and the sins that we fall into of money and fame and pleasure and power and the temptations. So but here's the balance, though, is that, you know, sometimes we can focus too much on sin and think that we're nothing but just trash. You know, we're beyond redemption we're hopeless we're filled with guilt and shame and how do you find strike that balance between recognizing that you're a sinner who needs god's grace but also not you know falling into the extreme of you know of thinking that we're not worthy of god's love i think that you have to make a distinction between sort of like the bad choice that you make and the fact that like your choices don't mean that you're a bad person you made a bad choice and you know i kind of think of like peter and Judas, I mean, one repented and one despaired. So I think that there is a fine line of, I mean, if you if you believe that you're a bad, like the sin makes you a bad person, you could fall into that sin of despair and desolation and all of that. And um, I think that that is dangerous. Mm. It's a good point. So what what do you do with that feeling of sinfulness? You know, you're running to Christ's mercy or just giving up hope. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think of, like, the, the thief, you know, on the cross next to him. You know, there's always hope if you're repentant, if you're repentant and you're seeking forgiveness. So, I mean, and especially, like, sort of, like, the divine mercy message, I think that's very important for people to understand that, I think in St. Faustina's diary, the, the thing that hurts Jesus the most is, like, a lack of belief in his 
love and his mercy. Yeah. But that also calls for repentance. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just freely given, I guess. For sure. I think for me is I dive into scripture and the people in the Bible that I admire the most, uh, like St. Paul, for instance, I look at his life before the Lord uh, took the scales of his eyes and I look at uh, David, the sins that he committed and then I compare them to my life and I see then later on what the Lord did in their lives and who they are and how important they are to the story of Christ and uh, then I realize that you know God's mercy is infinite and he's molding us and uh, uh, this is just you know something that I need to bring to the foot of the cross and how do I do that I think for me is I just I run to the Lord I run to church I run to um, confession I uh, and I realize the enemy in in that time I realized the enemy trying to get in trying to get in the middle of me reconciling with the Lord it happened to me this weekend I mean it's like I'm I realized this deep need to be reconciled with the Lord and I also think about John Paul the JP too, John Paul the second, how he went to confession every week. And so this deep need to be reconciled with the Lord and to feel his love and his mercy and uh but the enemy always gets in and you know, and starts kinda of telling you like, nah, you don't really need that. You're good. You can just wait a little bit longer and no, not at all. I mean, and it's like well, that's it for me. That's I just dive yeah. into scripture and I I look into the lives of the people that, you know, the Lord used uh, to bring his message and spread it around the world and um, how sinful some of them were. And then that guilt, is shame, that guilt and shame just kind of disappears because I realize how much love and mercy the Lord has. And um, It's true. Yeah, the saints, I mean, the saints did some unspeakably awful things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you study, I, I love, love, love studying the lives of the saints because of, you know, we revere them so much and we respect them so much and they lived so, such beautiful lives at the end of their lives but most of them or a lot of them had some very sinful beginning to their lives and our sins pale in comparison and so to see what the lord did in their lives and how he yeah. used them do you guys know the story of saint moses the black no it's one of my favorite stories this guy is uh he was a thug in ethiopia in the 400s and he was kind of like he was leading this gang of 75 men around the countryside, burning down houses and villages and raping and pillaging and, you know, slaughtering people by the dozens. Everyone was terrified of him, you know, and they finally, you know, it was 400, so they didn't have the FBI back then, you know, so you had to get some sort of police force to try to haul this guy in. And so he, he was kind of going on the lam, knowing that people were seeking after his life. And so he ended up going to this monastery and seeking after a place to hide out. You know, and also, she also heard the monasteries had gold. He's like, great, we can steal some stuff. And so he goes up there and he bangs on the door. He's like forcing his way in. And all of a sudden, the abbot comes and opens the door and welcomes him. And he was struck by something in the abbot's face. He had never seen joy and peace and love in the same way he'd seen this, in this man. And he said, I got to talk to you. What, what in the world? Why did you welcome me in? Don't you know who I am? He's like, yes, you're a guest. And we welcome all guests as Christ. And so he had this conversation with the, the abbot, and afterwards he came out and he dismissed, he dismissed his band of 75 men and said, look, I'm staying here. These guys have what I'm looking for. It's, it's the happiness that I've been seeking my entire life. So he became a monk. But even then, he still struggled. He struggled with lust. He struggled with anger. And after a couple of years, he's like, I can't do this. I can't hack the life of a monk. I'm just going to go back to what I was before. And the abbot, a very wise man, took him to the roof of the monastery as the sun was just cresting over the horizon for the dawn. And he said, look at this. The sky does not light up all at once, but only gradually. In the same way, your life life is not going to change immediately, but gradually. So stay faithful to Christ. And he did stay faithful to Christ. He got ordained a priest and then started his own monastery with 75 men because he had led 75 men into sin. He was going to lead 75 men to heaven. Hmm. I think it's such a cool story because, I mean, this guy could be on the FBI most wanted list. You know, he would have been on death row. But instead, he became a great saint, you know, because of the mercy of God. And I'm sure there were days when he was tortured by the memory of his sins. That's a beautiful transformation. And it just makes me think of today, you know, if someone goes through the criminal system or is imprisoned, right, 
people can go through really difficult times and, and maybe they shouldn't even be there in the first place, but they end up there and it could be years, right? And they don't deserve this and they come out and how does society treat them? Mm. You know, like they're, they're really not given much of a chance. And so automatically these people often have to return to crime to just survive. And, and so they're like stuck in this cycle of despair. And, and especially if you think of young people, right? Minors who kind of get caught up in the wrong things and, mm-hmm. and just feel like there's, there's no way out there. And there's no Abbott, I think that is um, <laughs> welcoming people like this with a smile yeah. and, and giving people a chance. Like, uh, I think we probably could all do better with that. And well, when I lived in Baltimore, I spent a year in jail ministry doing prison ministry <laughs> and with, what would you say what was your experience it was awesome i loved it i loved it because these were the most some of those genuine people you know they had no they they had no pride you know they were not puffed up with themselves they knew they were sinners and they knew they were guilty of sin but what struck me i think the most is that that a lot of their sin is because they were deeply wounded you know they didn't just sit there wake up one morning and was like i think i'm gonna rob a bank you know it's because they had no fathers in their life it's because they had no, you know, there's no guidance. They had no church. They had no faith. And then, you know, finally they came to faith in, in prison because I only met with the ones that were faith-filled and wanted to meet with a chaplain, mm-hmm. you know, and I was really impressed. Like these these were guys who started to find in Christ everything they were lacking. And because of Christ healing them, they were going to have the strength to go out and return to the world as a changed man or woman. Which is beautiful. And for anyone, I don't know, who might think like they're not worthy you know, or, oh, I could never be a a person religious, right? Like, you can actually through God, right? And it's step by step, just bettering yourself, whether it's talking to a priest or sitting in mass, like whatever slow, just praying in your room. Yeah, adding in more prayer, like God is there. God loves you so deeply, so endlessly, right? We we can't feel that now, but but we will, you know, um, when we pass on to the spiritual world, but God's love is there. I think he's constantly seeking us, constantly trying to reach out to us uniquely, right? Because we, we all respond differently. So he's there and, and he'll help us. He'll change us. He'll transform us. You know, it's possible, I think, to completely turn around yeah. our lives, turn away from sin. That's right. <laughs> and I think connected to that, like think about the person you love most in your life. Maybe it's your mom or dad, maybe it's your kids or your niece and nephews, whatever, you know, whoever it is. And think about, you know, if they fell into some terrible sin, your heart would not be furious at them. You wouldn't kick them out of your life. You would just say, oh, I love you so much. You know, your heart would break for them and ache for them. And that's, that's how God feels about sinners. You know, he's not like, oh, you screwed up again, forget it. He's like, you're my child. Like, I love you so much. Like, I just, my heart aches for you. You know, come back and... So thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Restless. As we we're talking about sin. Here's the deal. Here's your challenge this week is to, to accept God's love and mercy in your life. You know, if you have shame, if you're struggling with guilt from the past, if you're struggling with sin, just open your heart and just right now in your room, in your car, wherever you are listening to this, you know, just turn to Christ and say, Lord, come and heal me. Come and heal the past. I, for, I repent of my sin. I seek your face and just come and be the savior that I need. Right here, right now. He wants to do that for you. Thanks so much for joining us. You can find us on Veritas Catholic Radio, 1350 AM. Also, wherever you find your podcasts. Look forward to seeing you all next time.